life to you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beautiful worship. Beautiful worship this morning and this afternoon. To God be the glory. You know, when you think about presenting, it's an offering. Because I'm giving up something of value to myself that I'm presenting to you. And that's what God's looking for. A heart that don't mind giving up yourself to worship his holiness. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. And there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the King of kings, and the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if you will, please stand all over the room. I could prolong the time any much longer than the Spirit allow. Going to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. But before I do, I just want to thank the Lord for everybody in the house today who personally aren't to be here. I pray that God is ministering to your heart today and that you're receiving what you're looking for by the Spirit living God. I thank God for our pastor. God allowed me in the house today as well. I thank God for his family and for even the youth this morning. It's beautiful. Even though they tried to quote the whole Bible, we can't do it ourselves. I forgot. I'm just keeping it real. I used, I used to do, have to do that too while they age. I forgot a lot of the books, but I know where to find them though. I tell you that. I know where to go find it. <laughs> Praise the Lord God Almighty. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and it reads as follows, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I got a couple other scriptures to go to, but I'm going to read this to you. I'll maybe be able to sit down just a minute. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your presence in this place. So, God, thank you for the anointing in the atmosphere, oh God, that's breaking yokes, destroying Father God, the, the bondages of the enemy in our lives, and that, Father, you're setting the captive free. I thank you, O God, for the spirit of truth and righteousness, God, that's been revealed in our hearts as we learn how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that you lead, God, and direct us in the way of truth, O God, in the path where you have ordained that we should walk in to bring you glory. Your word tells us the way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. But, Father, we ask today that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation, God. Open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, our minds to understand. The word that you speak unto us in this moment, God, we thank you. That healing will flow, deliverance will flow, and that the victory, Father God, will see ourselves walking and abiding in your victory. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For the whole month, the pastor has been talking about vessels, and it just stuck in my spirit to to end the, the month on this Sunday talking about the same thing, vessels. Because there are different types of vessels, but you got to go back to Genesis, the beginning of the vessel. You hear that? Because when God gave me this revelation, he took me to the book. I was lying in my bed, and the Holy Spirit took me in, in the spirit, and I saw the hand of God creating. And as I was looking in the spirit, the Lord showed me something in this one passage of scripture. We, we read it all the time. We can quote it to left and right. But something that stood out to me about this, this passage of scripture, it's about vessels. Because the word says, and the Lord God formed, right? So he, we know the story how God took the dirt. You know, he made some clay. He formed a man from the dust of the ground, right? But after the forming of the vessel, all he had was an empty vessel. Y'all hear that? An empty vessel. 
And the Spirit of the Lord began to show me that this vessel is empty until God create the spirit and the soul. Once God created the man in his image and his likeness, he also began to create within the man the spirit, which is his breath, and the soul so man can live. So when God began to breathe upon the man, man, the word says he became a living soul, right? So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. I'm going to show you something here. Just some guy gave me. I'm going to do this real quick, and I'm going to sit down because I really hear the Spirit of God talking this morning because I thought about the picture Pastor put up here because sometimes our vessels become marred. That means discombobulated, messed up. This is a marred vessel because it, what, is, what is it doing? It's leaking because there's cracks in the vessel. So I went to Jeremiah, and in the beginning of verse 1, it says, And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And, and I began to visualize. I remember I, several years ago, I had a cousin who, who got into pottery. And he bought his kettle, his kiln, and all that stuff. He bought the, all the equipment he needed to create a vessel, right? So it's a process in order to create a vessel. You gotta have some water, you gotta have some clay, you gotta have a kettle, you gotta have a warmer. So you gotta have different tools to make a vessel become something of value. Y'all pay attention now, this is gonna be good. So the Lord told Jeremiah, said, what, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, rise and go down to the pot of self, and there I will call thee to what? Hear my words. We have to have a willing spirit in us to hear the words of the Lord. If you're not willing to listen, we talk about on our radio show all the time, Focus 2020 radio show, me and Pastor Owens. We always talk about we have to guard our ear gates, guard our hearts, guard our minds, guard what you see, because if you don't guard yourself, Satan comes back and takes residency. We just talked about last week, the eviction order, right? Certain devil eviction order. If you don't guard your vessel, your house, the enemy comes back with seven other spirits. You become worse than you were in the beginning because he decided, I'm going back to my house where I just came from. And God began to speak to me. He said, now look at Jeremiah. So it says, then I went down to the potter's house, verse 3. And behold, he wrought a work on what? Wheels. There were some wheels. Not just one wheel, but wheels. Many wheels. Verse 4. And the vessel that he, had made, that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. Wow. Ain't that something? It got marred. It got warped. I, I remember seeing on, on, on a... Uh, YouTube video where a potter was making a, a, a vessel out of clay, and as the wheel is turning, if he didn't put his hands strategically in the right place to form that, that, that vessel, it gets warped. It gets marred. It gets messed up. God says, every time we put our hands in the way when he's trying to mold us and shape us in his image and his likeness, we get marred. We mess ourselves up because we get in the way of what God is trying to do to make us better. I, I remember a song that he, he heals the broken heart, he binds the wounds, right? My vessel belongs to you, God, and all this stuff, right? So the vessel that I am, which is a container, every individual in this room is a vessel. Because the word says that know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? And God doesn't do an unclean temple, right? So a vessel could be a temple. It could be a place because it contains something. And when God began to speak, he says, I'm containing my vessel with my spirit. I want to pour into you, but I can't because there's so much debris and garbage being hidden inside of the vessel. I remember my mom used to have a vase, right? <laughs> I think about her laugh because 
I was playing ball in the house. She told me to play ball in the house, right? And I threw the ball, and the ball hit her vase, uh, one of her precious vases that she loved the most. And I broke it. And I was like, oh, no, I got to fix this. So I went and got some glue. She said, I'm going to fix this vase, hoping that she don't pay attention to the vase. And, of course, it took a while before she noticed someone was wrong with the vase. And she said, wait a minute. Who broke my vase? And nobody said, me and my sister wouldn't say nothing about it, because they didn't know I did it. I did it on my own. And I'm just being quiet. I'm concealing it, because I know I was the corporate that messed up. And I didn't say anything until Mama said, if nobody confessed the truth, everybody can do it. Pat said it last Sunday. And that's how I was in our house, too. If no one confessed that they did what they did in the house, everybody got in trouble. So, of course, I had to go and admit it so they wouldn't get in trouble. I did it, Mama. For, I, I didn't mean to do it. What did you do? I was playing ball. I told you to play ball in this house, and you did it anyway. And look what you did. You getting a whooping. <laughs> they did not play back in those days. So the potter got his hands molding a vessel, and it was marred in the hands of the potter. But check this out. Even though it was messed up at the moment, I love this. He made it again another vessel. How many times you've been messed up, discombobulated, confused, all in your mess, all in your hangups, all in your strongholds, your issues, your problems, everything going wrong in your life, and God says you're messed up. But I put stoppers in my, you know how we, we like put some earplugs in your ear, you don't want to hear something, trying to drown out the noise around you? We try to drown out God's, God's voice with spiritual earplugs. So we plug our ears up so I can hear. And God says, I'm still speaking. You're trying to shut me out, but I'm still there. So your conscience starts bothering you. When you're out of order with God, if you're really a child of God, you're going to be convicted. Something on the inside is going to convict you to let you know, hey, you out of order. You ever been into a business? I remember uh, going to a store and need to use the restaurant, right? And, and they have sign up, out of order. God says your life is like going into a place that's out of order. So he put a sign on it, out of order. And God says, I'm trying to fix what's out of order to rearrange it, to fix it as I please for my satisfaction. But you got in the way. Therefore, you're out of order. Glory to God. So then it says, so he made it. He made what? The vessel. The vessel that had cracks in it, even had a leak in the bottom. The vessel that didn't look good anymore. He said, you know what? I'm going to redo it again. I remember a song by this artist named Whitney Phillips. He, he made a song called The Potter. And it talks about the vessel being marred, and yet God took that vessel and he decided to do it again. He didn't want to leave us in the state of our mess-ups he didn't want to leave us in our garbage. He didn't want to leave us in the junkyard. He didn't want to leave you in that, that dark alley of sin. He said, you know what? I, I know what to do. If you just sit down and be patient, be still, as it seems good to the potter to make it. God says, as it seemed good to me. I know where you are. I know where your mind is all over the place. I know your heart is broken. You're torn. I know everything is just, just you got you just confused. You're trying to figure out how to get out of this situation. You didn't got in this problem. Can't get out of it. It's like the more you try to fix stuff, the worse it got. God says, so he made it again another vessel. So God says, if you let me come into your heart, I'll remold you and reshape you into the image of what I want you to be. But we get to the place where we say, God, I'm tired of waiting on you. Where are you, God? I didn't pray, and I cry, and I cry, and it's like nothing seems to be changing in my life. And the more I try to seek you, yet stuff getting in my way to keep seeing you, so I don't know where you are no more. You done lost your way. 
the enemy has blinded you from the truth. And that's what he does. He comes in our lives and he put blinders on our eyes when we're in a mess. He knows where you are. The enemy can see you. He can see where you're at. That's why he influences you, entices you to be driven by your own desires, your lust of your flesh. Because he knows if I can keep you in that dark place, you never allow the light to shine in you. So God is saying that if you let me, I'll take everything in your life and fix it back to my satisfaction. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to tie all three of these scriptures in together. Beginning in verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. You ever look inside of a vase? Isn't it dark in that vase? When nothing's in it? Right? If nothing's in your vase, it's just emptiness. Our hearts become empty. And God is saying, what I want to do is take that vase of your life that's empty. I want to put myself in that vase, that vessel, so I can fill you with my power my word, my anointing, my healing, my deliverance. I want to put everything that I am inside of you. So he says, for God commanded. It was a stern word. Command something. I dare you to do it right now. I'm telling you, you have to obey me. God says he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And check this out. Has shined in our hearts. You know why? Because the vessel was dark. Our vessels became dormant, became bankrupt, it became empty, vile, full of sin and affections of the flesh. It was infected. Our vessel became infected. You don't see the ve vessel infected on the outside of the vessel, it started getting corrosion. And it started decaying the whole vessel till it looks terrible. I have a vase, right, for, with a plant in it. And sometimes, over a period of time, the vase, it began to leak. Not only would it begin to leak, but the sides get too much moisture, it started getting molded. So it's time to change that, that plant out of that vase into another vase. Our spiritual vases... When I continue to dip and dab and sin, my vessel becomes spiritually molded. And God says, the only way to clean you up, I got to get rid of this vessel and get a new one. Sometimes God can take the old stuff and make it new. But then sometimes, he's like, I got to change because if I leave this one here, they're going to go back to the same debris, go back to the same mess. They're going to get stuck again. Therefore, I can't leave in that same state of mind. So I got to take the light to shine in the darkness. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Ooh, that is so good. So the reason... The light shines so we get revelation. That's what he's talking about. He says to give light. Light, what, what it does. What light does? Anybody? What light does? Illuminates. So he's saying, I want the light to illuminate. You know, on my prayer line, I say this a lot every day on, on the prayer line. We get ready to close out. I said, let the word be a lamp to your feet and line to your pathway. And the reason why, because the word become a lamp to your feet, it illuminates your pathway. So when the enemy is hiding in the trenches, in your pathway, ducking and hiding, trying to keep you from seeing him, but he's trying to influence you, so he's putting baits before you. So he puts stuff in front of you to lure you away from your pathway. So God says, if the light shines, 
I can see. I can see in front of me. I can see behind me. Because now my pathway has been illuminated. So I can look back and see if he's coming behind me or he's coming in front of me. I can even see the size if he's coming in any direction. So God says the light of the knowledge. The only way the light of the knowledge of the word of God can shine in your heart if you want it. If you want God to speak to your heart through your ear gates, get into your heart, give you a revelation of an understanding of who he is, you got to let the glory of God reveal to you the face of Jesus Christ. Because the face of Jesus Christ is the word. Because when I look into the mirror, James told in chapter 1, the latter part, he said, Behold a man who looks in the looking glass, and he says he sees who he is, and when he walks away, forget who he, what man or man he was. But when Christ is revealed to us in the light of the knowledge, the glory appears to us. Look at Moses on the mountaintop. He said, Lord, show me your glory. And he said, Lord, I want to see you in all your splendor. And God said, Moses, I can show you my glory. No man can look at my glory and live. But since that encounter, Christ came on the scene. He said, now you want to see my glory? I'm going to reveal it to you. Because the same glory that that I am in there in the earth realm, I can now pour inside of you to fill your tabernacle, fill your vessels with my presence. Which brings to verse 7. But we, everybody in this room, we, the body of Christ, have this treasure in earthen vessels. What's the treasure? Anybody ever read that and ponder, like, what is he talking about? What, what is this vessel he's talking about? What is this treasure he, he, he's talking about in earthen vessels? I read this for years and did not understand this. Until one day, I intently read it to get an understanding. And God began to show me that we are the earthen vessels and the treasure is the knowledge of Jesus Christ that he reveals to you through the light that shines in your heart. So when you get the light in front of you, the treasures in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know what he's talking about? That glory, that excellency, the perfection, the power of God. All that in Christ Jesus had been deposited into us that now we know that the power that I operate in is not about me but about the God being revealed in my life. Glory to God. But if you go on further he deals with life crisis. He reminds us in the beginning that the gospel being here to those who are lost from the God's world blind the mind of them, then he talks about life crisis after he reveals to us about the revelation of the treasure. So we're troubled on every side, yet not in distress. Just because you have troubles don't mean you got to be distressed. I found out from serving the Lord, it pays off after a while, that even when I'm in trouble, I can call on the name of Jesus, and something happens on the inside to give me peace. He said, we are perplexed. You ever been perplexed trying to figure out how to pay a bill, and just trying to treat me? Put your money in different places, and you're trying to do this to make this work, trying to do that, make that work, and all of a sudden something else happened. I'm puzzled. But then all of a sudden God shows up in a supernatural way, and he works things out in your favor. And you're like, where did that come from? All of a sudden the check shows up in the mail. You're like, where did that check come from? I wasn't expecting that one. God have did to me many times. Just a few months ago, I got a $300 check in the mail. I'm like, where did that come from? Thank you, Jesus, because I needed the right time it came. So I want to tell you that when your faith is anchored in Jesus Christ 
It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You might get perplexed, but not forsaken. Because God promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Glory to God. But then he goes on. He says, we're troubled on every side. Yet not distressed, we're perplexed, but not in despair. That's the despairing cry. We're not in despair because God's already there on the scene working things out in your favor. It don't look like it, don't feel like it. You can't see what God is doing, but I know in my heart that God is doing something supernatural. Then he says, persecuted, but not forsaken. Persecuted. You ever been persecuted? Anybody here been persecuted? Folk talk about you, they backstab you. You've been persecuted on your job, won't give you promotion, or they step over you. You've been persecuted. We all been persecuted. But he tells us, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Just because I fall, don't mean I'm cast down forever. Because I'm not destroyed. Because my God is right there on my side. Just when I'm about to fall and dash my foot against a stone, he said he gives his angels charge over me to lift me up upon eagle's wings to rise above my troubles and my storms of life. Just because I'm in a storm don't mean it's all over. When I'm in a storm, I can rest in the promise of Jesus Christ, knowing that he's right there in the ship with me, that peace will abide, the joy God will flood my heart, that I can just rest in his presence. All you got to do is hold on. To God's unchanging hand. Just because I'm persecuted, you gotta pray for the persecutors. Pray for your backsliders. Pray for your haters. Begin to pray for them and bless them. So in so doing, he said, God will bless you. Because you're praying for your enemies. But I love this part, verse 10. It said, always. Bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our bodies. I come to tell you today that even though you're going through the trouble of life, Jesus Christ will still be manifested in your situation. You might feel like it's all over. Might feel like there's no hope for tomorrow. But I've come to tell you today that God is working things out for you. That God is turning your midnight into day. That God is calling peace to abide in the storm. That God is covering your mind in confusion. That God is mending your broken heart. That your vessel may receive the excellency of the power of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Won't you stand? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus, that we are vessels created in your image. We are vessels created in your likeness. That the same power that raised Jesus from the dead that same power that hung on Calvary's cross, that same power called Jesus to die and go into a grave, that same resurrection power is the same power that raised us up out of our darkness, the same power lifted up on eagles' wings, the same power turned our lives around, the same power gave us a new direction. The same power gave us hope for tomorrow. The same power healed our broken heart and blind of every wound. The same power that held oh, glory to God. The same power. We are called Jesus. Something got to change in my life. When I call on Jesus, the devil had to leave me alone. When I call on Jesus, get behind me, Satan. When I call on Jesus, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. When I call on Jesus, the power.
power of God flow to my heart, to your heart. The same power flood my heart with joy to give you joy. The same power allows him to flow from me to you. The same power that he'll be glorified in this vessel. God wants to be glorified in you today. Doesn't matter what you're going through. You might feel like God ain't answering you. But I come to tell you that he hears. And he cares about you. He hears and he cares about your cry. Your despairing cry. When you was on the shore, drifting far away. And you cry, Lord, save me. The same power. So I hear you. That same Jesus is that power. I hear you, Willie. I hear you in your bed of affliction. I hear you. God says, I hear you, Sister Davis. God says, I hear you, Brother Abel. God says, I hear you, Minister Lane. God says, I hear you, Sandra. God says, I hear you, church. I hear what you're going through. I'm here to answer you, says the Spirit of God, to bring you through it all. And all you got to do is trust me. If you trust me, stop worrying about it. Anxiety in the heart of a man will weigh you down. But a broken spirit will dry up your bones. And God has said today, I don't want you to be dried up. I don't want you to be dried up no more. You might feel you've been bankrupt and dried up. Feel like God has left you. God said today, the cycle has to end. The cycle of regret. The cycle of of condemnation the same cycle of brokenness it has to end today says the spirit of god because i'm called the resurrection in your situation to raise you up with the power of god so you can see yourself victorious if you only believe god said healing is already yours if you only believe god says the vessel is being restored. If you only believe to the same power that was in Jesus Christ is in you and I today. So the same power has the ability when you lying down on your knees and crying and crying and crying and you're just weeping, your heart is torn and broken because of the same power come envelop you. This is the same power wrap his arms around you. He will carry you in your moment of despair. He will carry you in your, your crying sad hour. He will carry your broken heart. He said, you might have lost a loved one. God says, I'm still here. I'm healing you. I'm delivering you, says the Spirit of God. Only if you trust me. The Lord says, trust on the Lord do good. So he sailed down the world in the land. God says, I want you to prosper. I want you to be successful. But it only comes when you surrender your life to Jesus. Allow the Spirit of God to fill your vessel like never before. God says, you might have been empty for a season. You felt like your anointing was drying up for a season. But God says, today... It's a day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of restoration. So everything that was taken from you, today is a day of reaping. The harvest. Because you didn't faint. But you stood in there. You held on to my hand. And God says, you held on to my hand covered you. I'm leading you. I'm directing you. I'm guiding you. Says the Spirit of God. I'm taking you to a place you've never been before in order for you to be perfected in my righteousness. So I want you to lift your hands all over the room. 
Bless your name, Jesus. We want to bless your name. We want to bless your name. We want to bless your name. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are, broken vessels. You're mending. I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that's shaking us, shaping and molding us into the image that you want us to be. We were marred. We were even scarred. We had scrapes on us, God. Sores that wouldn't heal. But here we are, God, standing in the need of prayer, asking you, Lord God, to heal the brokenness, to bind the wounds, to perfect us in holiness and righteousness, to change us, where chains will fall off our minds and the shackles off our lives. We'll no longer be bound and held in captivity. But we ask God that you come into our hearts. Clean us up. Make us holy. Don't let us stay the same way we were we came in this place. But let us leave knowing that we have the God encounter like never before. That you would be glorified we come to lift you up for you can be exalted. That you can pour into us, God, to fill us up, to pour us out. Fill us up, to pour us out. That we can reach the lost souls for Jesus. We can walk by faith, sharing the good news of the gospel. How you changed our lives. And I thank you, Lord God. It is so according to the word of God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our minds, over our hearts, against every demonic force, every attack, every assault that's come against us, God. That you would cover our minds and our hearts, of God, by your spirit. And I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for never abandoning me, never turning your back on me. I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, willful and unknowing sins, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I ask, Lord God, that you restore me, revive me, rebuild me to be the vessel that you call me to be, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, give God a hand for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that bless your heart. As it bless mine. The Lord begin to fill you up even more this week. Have an expectation. Have an expectation. 